Shade and Stitches show. Today we are going to make this cute little crop sun top, complete with peekaboo sleeves. <laughs> it's the perfect thing to wear over your bathing suit or a tank top, and it looks really cute with jeans or over a little summer dress too. It's nice and loose and breezy and cool because we're going to make it using cotton and a nice lacy pattern stitch. We will have a written copy of this pattern available for sale in our Etsy shop. And like all of our customizable clothing patterns, it has tons of notes and directions for making it easy. So don't be afraid to pick up one of our patterns. It really helps support us here. And remember, we're always here to help. Since I'm busting through my yarn stash this year, I am using the yarn that I have on hand. But you can make your little crop top in a solid color or stripes. It's entirely up to you. I'm about a size small medium adult, so I made sure I had at least 300 grams of medium weight size 4 cotton yarn available to use. If you're large, extra large, etc., I would recommend making sure you have between 75 and 100 grams per size up you go from there. You'll probably have way more yarn than you need, but it's better to err on the side of too much yarn than not enough, especially when you're making a customizable piece of clothing. We want our sun shirts to be comfortable and made to fit us. So we need to take some measurements first. So grab a pen and some paper and a measuring tape and let's go. First, you want to take the largest circumference you have of your upper body. For most women, that's around the bust area, but if you're small, it might be around your shoulders or even your waist, depending on how long you want to make this shirt. Be liberal with your measurements. Take a deep breath. <laughs> Remember, we want this to be nice and loose. So for me, that's around 36 inches so far. Take that measurement, and I'm just doing this in inches for the sake of the video, but 36 inches was my largest measurement. Now we're going to divide that measurement in half. So for me, that ends up being 18 inches. Because we want to make sure this is nice and loose and breezy, we're going to add another four inches to that number. So whatever your number is, add four inches, and this becomes your width measurement. So whatever this little number ends up being, that's the number you're going to focus on for the beginning of our video. The second measurement you want is the length measurement. So grab your sewing <laughs> or measuring tape and you're going to hold it around the top of your shoulder and you're just going to sort of decide where you want it to end. So for example, if you want, um, if you want it really, really short, then you grab that sort of grab it there, maybe a little longer, wherever you want it to be. Take that measurement and write that measurement down. It's not a super important measurement because you can really adjust the length of this as you go, but it's nice to have a starting point to aim for. Okay, that's all we need to get started. So grab your hooks, grab your cotton yarn, your notes, and your measuring tape. Let's head on over to the craft table and we will stitch up a summery crop top together. We're going to be making two identical pieces to make our entire shirt. So you want to start with at least 300 grams of medium size four. So medium weight size four, 100% cotton yarn. I'm a medium, so I've set aside 300 grams. Um, I will probably have more yarn than I need for this project, but it's better to err on the side of too much yarn than not enough when you're making a custom piece of clothing. If you're large, extra large, double XL, triple XL, whatever size up from medium you are, add an extra 75 to 100 grams of yarn per size. Like I said, you'll probably have way too much yarn, but it's better to have too much than not enough. You're going to need a measuring tape, your notes and your pen from earlier, a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and today's hook is a five millimeter or an H8, also known as a size six in the UK. And if you're not comfortable with your multiplication tables, you might also want to have a calculator on hand because that will help get us going right at the very beginning. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. We're going to be using the double crochet V-stitch today. So we're going to grab our yarn and start with a slip knot. And because we're using the V-stitch, our foundation chain row needs to be a multiple of three. And this is where I said you might want to have your calculator handy if you're not comfortable with your multiplication table. One of the easiest ways to start doing this is to just start counting in sets of three. And if all you can do is say one, two, three, 
<laughs> one, two, three, over and over again, that's fine. That way you know you at least have a foundation chain row that is made up of sets of three. So that's what I mean when I say a multiple of three. Keep your measuring tape handy. That number that we had from earlier, which is your entire circumference split in half, adding four inches or 10 centimeters, that's the number that you wanna keep in mind while you're working this foundation chain row. So keep working on sets of three, and once you've got a foundation chain row that measures the same length, not stretched, as that number that you need, then we will continue from there. Once you have chained a foundation chain length that matches up without stretching to your number, so for me, I wanted to get to 22. So if I lay down my measurement or my chain uh, foundation chain row without stretching and it gets to that number, I know I'm done. So somewhere near that number, count up all your chains and divide it by three to make sure that it's an exact multiple of three. And once you're content with that, you're gonna add four more chains. So my final foundation chain row was 72. That's an exact multiple of three. And now I'm gonna add four more chains to the end of it. And these are the turning chains. So once you have your multiple of three, add another four on the end for turning, and write that number down. So my final chain count in my foundation chain row is 76. So you wanna grab your pen and paper and write that down because when you go to make your second side, you wanna make it exactly. So 76 chains for me, that includes my four turning chains. All right, here we go. We're going to find the seventh chain from the hook and we're going to work a double crochet V stitch into it. So that is a double crochet. Chain one, double crochet, all worked into the same chain. So that's what I say when I mean a V stitch for the rest of this pattern. And that is a double crochet V stitch because it's made using double crochets. Skip two chains, find the next one and work another V stitch into it. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. You are going to skip two stitches, work a V stitch into the third all the way across, and I will catch up with you near the end. As you're nearing the end of row one, and once you finish your last V stitch, you should have three chains left. Skip those first two and double crochet once into the last chain. And if you had a proper multiplication number of three, so whatever your foundation chain row with a multiple of three plus those extra four chains on the end, which over here becomes, sort of represents a double crochet, then it should have worked out for you. The next most important thing to do is take that row one, so take your piece, lay it down against your measuring tape and make sure that it is at least as long as your first width measurement. So the first width measurement is your entire circumference divided by two. If you remember, that was 18 for me. So forget the extra inches or sort of centimeters we added. It should be at least that number. If it's anything over, that's perfectly fine. So my row one works out to be 19 inches, which is great because this will be a slightly loose fitting top and that's exactly what we want. Row two and the row that you will repeat for the rest of this piece Chain three and turn, so chain three, turn for the end of every row. Find the middle of the next V stitch, and because we're using that V stitch with the double crochets, it's pretty easy to see. Just V stitch right into the middle of it. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet right into that space. You don't have to worry about stitches. Skip over to the next V stitch, find the center of it, and V stitch into that. And you're going to do that all the way across and I'll catch up with you at the end and I'll show you how to finish row two. The end of row two and every successive row of this little pattern is a V-stitch in the V-stitch of the row before all the way across and when you get to the end, you find that chain three turning, find the top of the chain three and just double crochet right into the top of the turning chain. And that's all you need to know for that stitch pattern. And isn't that neat? It kind of looks a bit like chain link fence. I really like that. Chain three and turn at the end of every row. That sets you up for your next 
stitch and just find the first V stitch and V stitch into it. Now, you can do this entire thing in one color if you've got the yarn for it, and certainly if you're planning out the yarn for this project, you might want to do that. But because I'm using up my stash, I will definitely be striping mine, uh, trying to make the stripes as even as possible based on what yarn I have left in my stash. So I will be changing color, and if you're going to be changing color like me, then stick around and I will show you how to do that next. I've decided, based on the colors I have available, that I'm going to do four rows of blue, and then a row of pink, and then four rows of white, and then a row of pink, and repeat. So there's my first four rows, and it's pretty easy to count. You just find a V-stitch and go count the spaces upwards. There's one, two, three, and four. Four rows. Finish your row off with your double crochet in the top of the turning chain, and snip your yarn. You can weave in your ends as you go, or you can wait to the end and weave them all in then. It's entirely up to you. Turn your work. Grab the next color you're going to add. For me, that's going to be pink. Start with a slip knot, just like we did at the very beginning. Pick up your... I guess we could start calling it a top. Why not? <laughs> this little bit here is the knot, so ignore that. This is the stitch. You're going to put your hook in that stitch, join your yarn with a slip stitch, and then chain three and continue with the pattern. So there's your chain three. That counts as a double crochet. It's just like a turning chain if you were to chain three and turn. I'm going to weave in my ends later, and you just start working that V stitch pattern into the V stitch of the row before. And that's all there is to it. We're going to uh, keep going now until the piece measures the length. So remember that length measurement you took way back at the beginning. You can keep holding it up against your measuring tape, but more importantly, once you get to the measurement of the length that you think you want, hold it up against yourself. Put it up at, right at the top of your shoulder and let it drape over your front and see if you like the length. You can always add more length to this particular pattern, which is lovely. That's why I say the length measurement wasn't super important, but it is a good thing to aim for. So I recommend working this pattern until it is at least as long as that length measurement you took, and then hold it up against yourself and check it out. See if you like it. If you want to add more, add more. If you like it the way it is, then we'll move on. I have completed 24 rows of the pattern stitch and from the top row to the bottom row if I measure it I get about 15 inches so that's relatively the length that I want it to be. Keep in mind we're going to add some trim around the bottom and once you block your little sun shirt it's going to sort of stretch out a little bit so um, if you're not exactly at the length you need it to be don't worry it is going to be a little bit longer and you can add more to the bottom if you get it on later and feel that it's not long enough. I used a repeating pattern of four rows of blue, a row of pink, four rows of white, a row of pink, and so on. And now I'm going to make a second piece that's exactly the same as the first. So the same number of foundation chains to start, and the same number of rows tall, and the same number of color changes. And before I do that, I'm going to weave in all my little tails. And I thought I would show you quickly how I'm weaving in some of the oddball ones since we are using an open stitch and it's not always obvious where you should weave in your tail. So I'm going to weave in this pink one to start and I'm just going to pick up and go through. So I'm going underneath the other colors stitches and I'm just going to pick up a little piece across the edge here Pull that all the way through. This is really grabby yarn that I'm using, so that's another kind of reason I like to use this particular cotton, just because weaving things in once or twice and it's probably not going to come back out. Pull it all the way in and then pull back just to make sure you haven't sort of damaged the look of your pattern. And then I'm just going to loop over top and go back through those stitches the way I came in, all the way out to the edge. Now because of the grabby nature of this particular yarn, going back and forth 
so back and then forth and out the other end, it's not going to unravel. So I can trim off that little bit. And that's how I'm going to weave in all these little tails along both sides of my shirt side one. And then I'm going to go ahead and make shirt side two. So once you've got two sides made, and all your little tails woven in, come on back and we'll put it together. Once you have both sides made and all your ends are woven in, you want to place them right sides together. Both sides will probably look roughly the same as this was worked back and forth, but if there's one side you like over another, then use that as the right side. So right sides together. The first thing we're going to do is address our top seam of our shirt. We're going to start with creating a neck hole. I recommend you create a neck opening that is around 13 inches or 33 centimeters across. You can of course make this any size you want, and the way to make sure that it's even and in the very center of your garment is to take both edges and count in a set of V-stitches that's the same on both sides. So I've got one, two, three, four, and I've pinned through the fifth, through, through the middle of the fifth set of V-stitches with a safety pin, and I did the same thing on this side. One, two, three, four, and pinned through the center. Then you take it and you try it on. See if the neck opening is to your liking, and if it's not, you can arrange your pins either side, so going in or going out, uh, until you've got a neck opening that you like. Then we're going to sew. If you want less sun on your shoulder, you will attach your yarn with your yarn needle right here at the neck edge and sew through each set of stitches all the way to the end. But if you want a peekaboo shoulder like I'm going to do, you're going to tack your yarn at both neck edge points and again at the edge of the garment on both sides. And I'm going to show you how to do that. You're going to thread up some matching yarn in your yarn needle, the yarn that matches the color across the top of your sun shirt. We're going to start at one of the neck edges and you can just run your yarn needle through, so you want to get through the center stitch, which would be a chain one, in the middle of that V stitch. I'm just going to remove my little safety pin here. Now if you're going to sew the entire seam from neck edge to the corner, you just want to knot your yarn here and sew through every single set, and then knot your yarn at the end, weave in both your tails. But if you're just going to tack it like me, you're going to leave a little yarn out, and then go through the same set of stitches once and then twice. Make sure it's nice and tight. There. Then you're just going to knot those two ends together. and leave enough tail that you can comfortably weave in your little two tails. So you can snip your yarn. And then you can just weave your tails in however you feel comfortable. Back and forth a couple times so they don't unravel. Then you want to tack at the corners and at the other neck edge. All right, that is the top seam looked after. So I've tacked it in four places, or if you're sewing the whole shoulder seam, you should have that should be sort of solid now. We're gonna use the same technique to address the sides. So go ahead, put your shirt on, and tack it where you think your armhole should end. So remember, the armhole reaches from the top of the shoulder seam down to just under the arm or wherever you want it to open to. My opening is 8 inches or 20 centimeters. I feel that's a nice size for my arm to move around in. It's not too tight. It's not too gapy either. And I'm going to sew from that point all the way down to the edge of my shirt. And since I changed colors, I'm actually going to change colors as I go. And let me show you how I'm going to do that. I'm just going to attach my yarn right where I've got my little safety pin. Remove my safety pin. I'm going to make sure I've got a good chunk of the edge of the seam there. I'm using the same color. I'm just going to knot my yarn so that I have a nice solid starting point. I like to knot things twice and I'm leaving enough tail that I can weave that in comfortably. And now 
Because I've got stripes, it's easy for me to see where my edges need to line up. If you don't have stripes, it might help to line up your bottom edge and then sort of pin as you go, just so you have a good eyeball of how far along you are. You don't want to accidentally sort of sew your sides crooked. I'm going to pick up pieces, sort of edges of the stitches on both sides and I'm working a whip stitch, which is a stitch that goes always in the same direction. So I'm always going from the back to the front. Make them not too tight, but not too loose, because you don't really want them to show. And if you use the same color like I am, it really does blend in. If you've changed colors like I have, when you get to the bottom of a colored section, work two little stitches through the same edge and then you can create a little knot using one of them. And that's usually enough that it won't come undone. Snip your yarn. Remember that you've got two ends to weave in for each colored space. And then change colors and do the same thing. Knot and sew and then knot and sew and so on until you get to the bottom. And when you go to do your other side, Make sure that you've pinned <laughs> in the same place as you did on the other side. Start from the same spot underneath the armhole and work down to the bottom edge. Once you've sewn up both sides, you can flip your little shirt right side out. And now we're just going to put a little edging around. We're going to finish up some of the um, edges. So we're going to edge the bottom and we're also going to edge the sleeves. So now that we're right sides out, Grab any color you want to use. I'm going to continue with blue here. I'm going to make a slip knot. You want to start in a seam. So flip your sweater around until you find a seam. And you're going to start in a stitch that kind of you may have sewn through. So that might be one of the little chains, probably, <laughs> at the bottom there. Join with a slip stitch. Chain one, and really simple, we're just going to single crochet into every single stitch all the way around. So remember, that's one chain. This is the bottom of the foundation chain row. So it might look a little funny. Um, you have the opportunity here to either make it a little bit smaller by skipping the odd chain so that your shirt comes in a little bit at the bottom or you can keep it even by working every single chain. I'm going to work a single crochet into every single chain all the way around, and I'll catch up with you at the end. After you've single crocheted all the way around, and you get back to the beginning, just join with a slip stitch to the first single crochet you made, fasten off, and weave in your tail. finish off the edges of each of our sleeves as well. I'm going to use blue, so then I'm going to have a little blue edge all the way around. That seems to be kind of the predominant color here of my little shirt. We're going to start with a slip knot on our hook, just like we did at the bottom. We're still working on the right side, so we're on the outside or the right side of our little shirt. And you're going to join your yarn in the bottom armpit seam, so right where your armpit is. Join with a slip stitch, chain one, single crochet in the same place, and there's no fine science to this. What we're just going to do is work a single crochet into the edge of each double crochet all the way around. So a chain three or a double crochet is sort of the edge stitch of each post. So we want to work two single crochets across each of those. It doesn't have to be the exact same place every single time. You want to try and evenly space them because you're going for a nice sort of even edging. Um, if you wanted to work all the way around your entire stitch, so if you thought that perhaps your stitch looked better if you worked all the way around it, you can try that. A little bit of experimentation is always recommended. But evenly space your single crochets just so you get a nice little even edging like that all the way around.
once you've worked two single crochets into the edge of every stitch all the way around, it should look something like that. Nice and even. Your sleeve hole should not have shrunk or gotten any larger. So nice and even. You're just going to join with a slip stitch to the first single crochet you made at the beginning of that row. Fasten off, weave in your tail, and do exactly the same thing on the other side. Once you've worked that little edging around both sleeves, fastened off, do one last check to make sure all of your little ends are all woven in, and you are finished! And now you have your very own summery crop top. I hope you had fun making it along with me this week, and don't forget, you can get a copy of the written pattern in our Etsy shop, and we really appreciate your support of our show. That's it for this week, everyone. We will see you again soon on the Jade and Stitches show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have a wonderful week. Bye, everybody.